What's up guys, I'm back. I'm bringing you another deck guy video today brought to you by Team Bandit Gang. And of course, Bandit Gang is a group of Gwent content creators and pro players. If you'd like to know more, I'm gonna leave a link to the website and the Discord in the description down below. And Bandit Gang offers coaching as well for Gwent players of all skill levels, whether you're new, uh, intermediate, or experienced, uh, we can definitely find a uh, coaching fit for you. So if you're interested, go ahead and check that out. I will leave a link to that down below as well. So let's go ahead and get into the video here. So of course, we're going to be playing with uh, Syndicate, Devotion, Congregate, which is a lot of fun. I really like this deck and it's actually pretty competitive, I would say. It, it does pretty well on the pro ladder. Um, if you're in the lower ranks, you can you can definitely reach pro rank with this easily, um, and you can definitely cr climb a bit uh, in MMR if you if you are on pro ladder already. Um, and this deck is actually one of the decks I brought to the Wild Hunt tournament, um, which was unfortunately canceled after one round. Um, I did actually play one round against Inferns. Um, if you don't know who he is, he is a really good uh, pro player. And I actually was able to beat his monster's overwhelming hunger with his deck, um, which was actually really surprising. Um, I I did not think I could beat him because he's really good. Uh, he did end up taking the whole series on me, though. He ended up beating me two more times with uh, with uh, Skellige and monsters afterwards. Uh, but I was able to to at least get one win with uh, with his deck in the in Wild Hunt before it got canceled. So. It's, it's a really good deck. I, I like it a lot. It's really strong. I feel pretty confident in it. So as always, we're going to do a quick little overview. We're going to go into some considerations. Maybe there's a couple things you want to change in the deck and then uh, hop into a game as well. Um, I'm going to try and make the overview a little bit shorter. I kind of I kind of tend to, to talk a lot here in the beginning, but um, let me know if, if you do like me going really in depth on the cards or maybe you just Maybe you just want to hear me uh, go on do like a quick little like five minute overview. Um, let me know because that feedback does uh, does help me out a lot and I appreciate it. So taking it from the top, congregate, um, spawn a fire sworn zealot on an allied row and gain one coin, three charges. So fire sworn zealot's a token. Uh, it's only worth uh, two strength, not a lot of points, but when used in conjunction with the fallen knights you're going to get a lot of points on the board. So Fallen Knights, whenever you spawn a unit, boost self by one for each unit spawn. So if you got a Fallen Knight on the board and you can pop your leader, let's say you use, uh, just, let's just say for example, you use all three charges, uh, Fallen Knight will instantly buff to a seven because he's four and you spawn three units. So Fallen Knights are really good in this deck. And this is a devotion deck as well. So since we're running devotion, uh, we get the benefit of third stage Jacques, which is really nice. He gets Veil and he gets, uh, whenever you play a Firesworn card, gain one coin, which is really nice because almost all of these cards are Firesworn cards. Um, we have a few that are that are not, but for the majority, they are Firesworn cards. So you're just going to be racking up the coins with Jacques there. And Ulrich, uh, Devotion, uh, spawn and play a base copy of F Brawn Firesworn unit from your hand. And then since we have Devotion, boost it by two. So the main target for Ulrich to copy is uh, your Fallen Knight here. Fallen Knight is just an insane card if he can stick on the board. And then as well, since we are Devotion, we can run Mutants Maker. Um, nothing too crazy with this card. J basically four strength and then uh, he just gains three coins instantly. Um, so pretty decent devotion card. You just kind of lay him down and just get some coins to spend, which is nice. So let's go back from the top here. Um, starting with the stratagem, tactical advantage. Um, I mean, you can, I feel like you can swap out tactical advantage if you like, but I really like pairing tactical advantage with um, Roderick if you can, because it makes him very hard to remove if you bo if you boost him with TA. Um, at the end of your turn, if order is not used, gain one coin, uh, and his order is spawn a Flaming Rose Footman in this road, which is a three strength uh, token. So if you play TA on him, he's gonna be um, he's gonna be just generating coins, which is really nice for you. Um, uh, we'll go into considerations later to see um, what arguments could be made for other stratagems like Tiger's Eye or something like that. Um, Jacques. 
evolving card, pretty much an auto include in this deck. Um, he's actually he's actually like really good card now that he got uh, buffed. I think it was like two patches ago. So honestly, he's kind of like an auto include in like any syndicate deck at this point, I would say. And he's he's just really good, especially with uh, devotion, fire sworn. Um, he might be my favorite evolving card now, to be honest. Um, Ulrich, already kind of talked about him. You're going to be wanting to use his ability to copy a Fallen Knight. Um, and then I didn't mention he has Intimidate Tag, which is nice as well. Um, we do have a pretty decent amount of Crimes in the deck. So whenever you play a Crime, he's going to proc Intimidate, which is also going to buff him. Um, Grand Inquisitor Helvede. So another Fire Sworn card here. Profit four, and then uh, spawn a Fire Sworn Zealot in this row for a fee of two. So what's really nice about this card is there's no cooldown. There's absolutely no cooldown. So as long as you have room on the board, and as long as you have coins, you can just constantly spam out uh, Fire Sworn Zealots, which is really nice. And again, it's gonna it's gonna play a lot of points combined with your Fallen Knight here. Uh, then we have a Valdi Bank. Uh, since we're Devotion, we're not running on Neuromancy here, so Vivaldi Bank is just a really nice, uh, really nice card to give us a little bit of consistency here. Uh, and then the uh, Echo Card DSE Ray. I hope I am saying that correctly. Um, if I am not, let me know, and I'll try and correct that next time. So this is the uh, Echo Card. It's um, I don't know. It's before people were saying it was like the worst Echo Card, and to be fair, it kind of was, but. It got a slight uh, provision buff. I think it was ten provisions before, and now it's nine. And uh, the, this whole this whole Firesworn archetype just got small little buffs to just make it really good. So it's going to damage an enemy unit by three and boost all Firesworn units by one. But if you get a death blow, you'll just boost all allied units by one, which can be a huge amount of points. This card just like gives you insane reach on uh, on red coin. And it is just an insane finisher as well in round three. This card is absolutely insane. I, I really want the uh, the premium of it, but I don't have any. I don't have enough uh, powder, so that kind of sucks. And then Sacred Flame. This is another card that got a buff recently. So it's gonna spawn a Fire Sworn Zealot on both sides of the card, and it's gonna boost all Fire Sworn units by one. Again, this card is absolutely insane. Uh, before it was just boost all fire. I think it was boost all units uh, in the row, but now it's boost all allied fire sworn units by one. So if you just swarm the board, which is really easy to do with this deck, uh, Sacred Flame is gonna play for a lot of points. And not that many people are running Bomb Heaver right now. Uh, so technically, this is an artifact card. It can be destroyed by Heaver, but you don't really see Heaver right now in the meta. Um, not that much. Um, so it, it can go unanswered and just play for a crazy amount of points. Really good card. I really like it. Um, and then we have Defender. Um, Defender, I mean, pretty standard. Not much to say here. Um, you're going to be wanting to defend either Jacques or Fallen Knights, uh, most of the time, I would say. Uh, and then Horson Senior is just, he is not a Firesworn card, but he does have the Intimidate tag. And he spawns the cut up lackeys, which whenever you play a crime card, damage a random enemy by one. Or if you uh, have the bonded ability, then you increase the damage by one. So this deck does have a pretty decent amount of crime cards. So he is going to play for pretty good amount of points as long as uh, him and the cut up lackeys stick on the board. Usually one of the lackeys will end up getting removed, but it's not a it's not a big deal. Um, you can also get some good value out of him as well if. Um, well, usually you want to transform like uh, your Fire Sworn Zealots, not necessarily from your leader charge, but you do want to transform these two point units into the uh, into the four point cut up lackeys. But maybe sometimes you can even get more value out of this transform ability to transform uh, an allied unit that's bleeding or maybe one that's damaged, and then uh, they basically just transform into a four point unit automatically, which is really nice. Uh, and then we have Furco, which is basically your standard uh, tutor card, play a crime card from your deck. If you don't have your Echo card in hand, you're going to be wanna, wanting to tutor that. Uh, but if you do have your Echo card in hand, you got plenty of other crime cards to choose from here. Uh, Tavern Brawl, uh, just a, a good crime card, does some decent amount of damage 
force an enemy unit to duel an adjacent unit. A uh, pretty good card, especially if people forget to play around it. Um, in the lower ranks, I don't think I don't think they're really expecting this card. But uh, when, once you climb higher, like in pro rank, people are probably gonna start playing around it. Uh, still, pretty good card though. One one thing I, I will say about this deck, uh, is the weakness is there's not a lot of not a lot of control, not a lot of damage here. So Tower and Brawl is one of your few control options here because this deck is really just all about swarming the board and, and slamming down points. Uh, Roderick, we already kind of talked about Roderick a little bit. Firesworn card, uh, Spawn of Flaming Rose Footman, and then if your order is not used, gain one coin. So he's really nice with TA. Um, and then as well, his uh, order ability, uh, since he spawns a unit, it procs your Fallen Knights as well. Uh, excommunication, uh, crime card, and a firesworn card, which procs intimidate, um, and procs uh, the coins on Jacques stage three. Uh, this is just another good uh, little consistency card here. Banish an allied unit, then play a top card from your deck. If the target was a firesworn, look at the top three cards from your deck and play one of them instead. So your main target for for excommunication again is going to be. A two point zealot. If you banish a two point zealot, you're you're fine. You're fine, and then you can choose uh, three cards from your deck to to play, which is really nice consistency. And then we have procession of penance. So this card is this card can provide some insane reach as well. He's a twelve strength unit for six provisions, but his deployability is damage self by ten, reduce the damage by two. For every firesworn token you control so it says firesworn token and not firesworn zealot so that means you can control let's say like two zealots but maybe you control like three flaming rose footmen because those are tokens as well so basically to play around his deployability uh, by damaging himself all you need is five five tokens on the board which is pretty easy to do so 12 for six is just absolutely insane he provides so much reach um and then fallen knights i kept talking about these cards these cards are just absolutely insane uh firesworn card has veil which is nice too it can't be poisoned or locked um it has intimidate which whenever you play a crime card it buffs itself whenever you spawn a unit boost self by one for each unit spawn and you're going to be spawning a lot of units with this deck so if these cards go unanswered they are just going to play for an insane amount of points. Trust me. Uh, Smuggle is just a nice... Uh, it's a crime. Firesworn card. Profit 3. Spawn a Flaming Rose Footman in Allied Row. Uh, just a nice proactive play and way to get coins uh, in your bank. Uh, and then we have two Clerics of the Flaming Rose. Again, Firesworn card. Uh, he's going to Profit 2. And then he has a tribute of two to spawn a fire sworn zealot in this row and he's a spender as well which is really nice um so he has a fee of one you can transform a fire sworn zealot into a flaming rose footman so this fee ability is actually really nice it's um it's really nice against skelliga because you can transform these two units into a a three strength unit with one armor and with Skellige, they have so much random pings, like with um, Rage of the Sea and things like that. Um, the armor could just tank damage, so it, he's a really nice spender. And as well, let's say maybe you have a Firesworn Zealot that's like bleeding, or maybe it's it's damage and it's a one strength unit. You can transform that into a three strength unit. So spend one coin and for for two points basically, which is really nice, really nice spender. Uh, and then Bloody Good Fun. Like I was saying, we don't have a lot of control in this deck. Bloody Good Fun is one of your options. Uh, you're going to profit four and spend all your coins and damage an enemy by the same amount. Um, just be careful with this card, though, because it's going to spend all your coins. So let's say maybe you have three coins already. You're going to profit four, so you're going to have seven total. And then you're going you're gonna to damage an enemy unit by seven. So you don't want to damage, like... A four strength unit and then you lose three coins so just be careful about that but other than that it's a it's a pretty decent uh removal card and then congregation um again prime fire sworn very nice very nice 
So you're going to spawn two Fire Sworn Zealots in an allied row, but if a Fire Sworn unit is in that row, spawn three Fire Sworn Zealots instead. So basically, just make sure you have any Fire Sworn unit um, in a row before you play this, so you can get the full six points. Um, and then again, this is going to be absolutely insane with Fallen Knights. Just really good four provision card in this deck. Uh, and then we have Assault. Um, another damage option here, damage in any unit by 4, if you control 2 Salamandras, uh, deal 6 damage instead. Uh, now this this condition may be a little bit tough to fulfill, but the 4 damage is still nice. Um, we do have some Salamandras in this deck, not a lot. We do have the 2 Mutant Makers, uh, Jacques Stage 3 <laughs> is a Salamandra, and then we have the Defender who's a Salamandra and... He can spawn up to two scarabs, which are also salamandras, which is pretty nice. So assault, just a nice crime card and just nice damage removal. Um, mutant makers already talked about them, just nice four point body with three coins, and then again they have the fire sworn tag and salamandra tag, which is nice. And last but not least, we have the eternal fire disciple fire sworn card. He's gonna profit two, fee two, and spawn a fire sworn zealot in this row. He's a cooldown of one. So he's pretty similar to Helvede, except he has a he profits two less and he has a cooldown. Uh, that's why Helvede is insanely good, because Helvede has no cooldown, so you can just instantly pump out units as long as you have coins. Uh Fire Disciple is still nice. Um he's also an option to use your TA on in round one. Um Maybe you didn't draw Roderick, but he he's really good, even with the cooldown. And again, he's going to continuously spawn out uh, Fires of Horn Zealot each, each turn, and in conjunction with the Fallen Knights, it's just going to proc them over and over. So that is the deck. Uh, let me go over the considerations real quick, if in case there's anything you maybe want to change. Um, with the Stratagem, I mentioned a couple times, I really like TA with Roderick. I like TA with Fire Disciple as well. There could be a argument for maybe running Crystal Skull, um, but there's no point in, in using Crystal Skull on Roderick since he already has Veil. You would want to use Crystal Skull on Fire Disciple. Um, I prefer TA over Crystal Skull in this situation. Tiger's Eye, I, I like Tiger's Eye, but I think it's better in like maybe like a hidden cash deck or something like that. Uh, I don't think you need. I don't think you necessarily need Tiger's Eye. Eh, there's a consideration for it, but we don't have... I mean, we have spenders, but we don't have like a lot of spenders. So you you may find yourself over-profiting if you run Tiger's Eye. So Tactical Advantage works the best, in my opinion. Okay, and then we have um, Defender. You can potentially take out Defender for maybe... Maybe like a Philippa or maybe a Morlise, just for a little bit more control in the deck. Uh, like I said, there's not a lot of control here. Although I feel like Defender is just really nice for defending your Jacques as well as defending your Fallen Knights. And again, has the Salamandra tag, which is really nice with Assault as well. And what else could we maybe change? You could maybe run two Smuggles. Only one cleric. Um, I, I tried that. It's not bad, but I I think I prefer two clerics just to have a, another spender, which is nice. Um, you could also maybe go two assaults instead of like one assault, one bloody good fun, or you could go two bloody good funds instead of uh, one of each. But I personally like having one of each, kind of just depending on the situation, uh, because I mean there's gonna be some. There's going to be some situations where you want to use Bloody Good Fun, and then there's going to be some where you want to use Assault. So, personally, I like having one of each, just to kind of have my bases covered. Um, Fire Disciple is a really good card. Um, you could potentially swap out one Munes Maker and put in a second Fire Disciple, just to have a, a another Spender in the deck, which is really nice. And I think that's about it. Uh, well, one other thing. I have seen people start to run... Where is it? Start to run the safe cracker in this deck. Um, he's actually a really good card. He has Intimidate and Boost Self by 1 for each crime in your hand. Now, this deck does have a good amount of crimes uh, here. 
uh he's definitely a consideration this deck he, he's really good i don't know what you would cut though to to make room for him maybe like maybe like roderick and upgrade somewhere else but at that point if you put him in then you're gonna be you're gonna be wanting to run more crimes and then and then at that point it kind of turns into maybe like a crime like gourd deck so i i, I really just kind of like sticking with the the fire sworn identity if, if that makes sense so that's the deck it, it's pretty good it's pretty fun we'll hop into a game and we'll see how we do and uh let's see how it goes all right and it looks like we actually got a mirror match <laughs> that's interesting i i usually i mean i've seen people play this deck this deck is not like it's not like a hidden gem or anything like that but i feel like not that many people play this okay so we got blue coin which i mean it's not terrible roderick which is nice i think we're gonna kick one cleric okay we get the echo card which is nice i don't think we necessarily need excommunication here i mean this is a pretty good hand to be honest a little a little too good to be <laughs> to be honest um I might actually kick bank here as well. Okay. So, yeah, I kind of just wanted some more bronzes because our hand was a little bit too good. Usually, I like to save Ulrich and Fallen Knights if I can for like round two, round three. Uh, if we can, if we can win this round without using them, I mean that's pretty good. So I think for now, like I said, TA onto Roderick is pretty safe play in most matchups, at least. Says. Just make sure like you're you don't do that against like monsters overwhelming hunger or something, you know, you get you get hit by like a mana core or, or a predatory dive. Bare knuckle brawler, okay. That's interesting. So Huh. Since we have our echo card in hand, I might actually just Furco take the assault here. That's not bad. I think I'm gonna do that. And again, Roderick is just going to be gaining coins for us. And then next, I think we're going to go either Fire Disciple or Cleric on the on the back row here. We need to start spending some coins. Novigradian Justice. Maybe he bricked his Justice. Oh no, he has another one. Okay, that's weird. See, yeah, I've seen people start to play this deck with uh, Save Crackers as well as Novigradian Justice, but... I mean, there's definitely an argument for it. It just makes your mulligans a bit more awkward. But maybe he isn't playing, like, full-on Firesworn. Maybe he's actually playing, like, just, just crimes. So, I think we want to start getting our Fire Disciples set up. I'm going to spend once here. And then we can go Cleric... Cleric our congregation next, and I think I want to. We can play our echo card. I'm fine with playing that. Um, oh, fallen knight. Okay, he's okay. He's he's committing then, huh? I don't want to commit too much to be honest here. So, like I said, I don't really want to play Ulrich or fallen knight. Hmm. I'm thinking about horse and senior, but we. If we play Horse and Senior, then we only have two crimes to play after, right? Congregation and uh, the Echo card. So I don't think that's that's the move either. I think we're just going to go Cleric here. We're going to do that. And, and I think we spend. This is actually kind of interesting because I don't think I've ever done a, a mirror match with uh, with this deck. Okay, so he goes his Fire Disciple. Pound Grade on the back row. And we can... Yeah, we can spend once here. I mean, he's our only, only spender, really. Well, well, we have the Fire Disciple too, but... 
I think we're going to... Okay. So we don't want to go too much further into this round. I think what we're going to do, we're going to spend this, we're going to click Roderick, and then we're going to echo onto his Fire Disciple that stops that. That gets us a good amount of points, and I think we're we're out of the round after this. If uh, if if he doesn't pass, we're we're out of the round. Okay, so he's gonna keep on going. Excommunicate and to Furco into the Echo card, maybe. That's actually gonna be a decent amount of points for him. Yeah, how much is that? I don't think that gets him ahead, right? Does it? Okay, it doesn't. Okay, yeah, we take our pass here. We take our pass. Uh, I mean, we didn't commit too much, Roderick, but you want usually want to play him round one on blue coin anyways. Played Excommunicate, he played Novigradian Justice, and a Fallen Knight, so I... I mean, I, I think I'm pretty happy with this. I think I'm fine with this. I feel like he kind of played the Echo card a bit early too. He doesn't have that many units on the board. Oh, Horseland Senior. Wow. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm very happy with that. I am very happy with that. That's actually really good for us, I think. So we get the echo card back. Bloody good fun. Uh, it could be good. Mutants Maker. I think Mutants Maker is actually good in case he dry passes. Um, bloody good fun could be good, but we're still missing some key golds. So I think I'm going to mulligan that. Okay, this is, this is nice. This is very nice. Let's see if he pushes or not. I don't, I, I mean, I don't think he should. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's smart. So we play that, we get eh, one coin to carry over. It's, uh, I guess that's all right. Okay, so usually in round three, I like to, I like to start with Defender if I have Defender. If not, then I'll just lay down Jacques. Okay, we get Bank. Pretty good. Tavern Brawl. Tavern Brawl could be good here. Uh, We're still looking for our gold though. We can fish for one of them with bank. Um, I think I'm gonna get rid of Mutants Maker. Uh, I think we kick Smuggle too. Congregate. That's not bad, but we're still missing some golds. Okay. Well, hmm. What are we looking for? I mean, Sacred Flame is probably going to be probably be the best here. Or maybe we can bank into Excommunicate into Sacred Flame. We need some coins. I think we I think we just lead off with Jacques because um, whenever you play a Firesworn card, gain one coin. And like I said, we got a lot of Firesworn cards here. So I think we lead off with Jacques. Take the tribute. Um, I don't think we have a reason to spend yet, so I'm not gonna not gonna spend. And next, a hey, Roderick. All right. Uh, we could have actually killed him with bloody good fun here, but I think that's fine. Fine. And maybe get a tavern brawl off of him. Okay, so like I said, we're probably going to be looking for Sacred Flame with Bank, but we need more coins. So I think we're gonna, just going to load up the Fire Sworn cards, um, load up our Fallen Knights, and use our Leader Charges. Although another Fallen Knight wouldn't be bad either. But I think for now we're going to go Ulric. Fallen Knight on the back row here. And since he goes to a 6, um, I don't think... 
I don't think we need to to leader charge because even if he has even if he has bloody good fun, uh, four coins plus one, he can only do five damage, so he can't kill Jock or Fallen Knight. So I think we we wait to get our second Fallen Knight before using our leader charges. Okay, so there there's his knight. He plays it on the back row, which is pretty smart. He's playing playing around the tavern brawl. Okay. So, let's go ahead and play... I'm going to play him on the front row. And now, since we have both our Fallen Knights down, we can go ahead and just use our leader charges. And I'm going to spend once on Jock, because... Probably gonna maybe go bank next, and if we profit three with six coins, we're gonna have nine coins, which means we can basically pull out any card in our deck. Eternal Fire Priest. That's that's not a bad card either, actually. I uh actually ran that card in one of my earlier versions of this deck. Um, but eh, it's all right. It's basically like a worse Fallen Knight. Although, wait. Actually, we could just Tavern Brawl that. We, I mean, we, there, there's an argument to maybe save this. Well, actually, huh. Maybe we do save this. Maybe maybe we do save it. Maybe we get her horse son down first, actually. Hmm. I'm trying to think here for a second. Maybe we get horse son down first. We spend some coins this way. And Tavern Brawl is a crime card, so it's gonna it's gonna proc intimidate as well as the cut up lackeys. And the, these are for sure gonna grow a little bit, so I think we're still fine. Okay, there's his Jacques. Could potentially Tavern Brawl the Jacques as well. Okay, no, that's that's a good Tavern Brawl. Okay, so there's an argument to be made to the Tavern Brawl the Roderick onto the Jacques, but I think killing the Fallen Knight is is better here. I think we kill the Fallen Knight because the Fallen Knight's going to play for just an insane amount of points. I mean, Jacques is a spender. He's his only spender right now, but he he might still have other spenders anyways. So I think we I think we take the tavern brawl into the night because th this night is just it's gonna grow out of control. So that that's a pretty good tavern brawl, I would say. Yeah, he's he's got another spender, anyways. Okay, so mm, I think could go bank now actually. Could go congregate as well to get an extra coin. Uh, let, let's let's congregate. Let's congregate. That gets us another coin because of Jacques, and then I think maybe we can. Maybe we can bank next turn. We we can also Helveed. Not bad either. But I think we want to bank it now while we while we got four coins in our pocket. I I still think we look for Sacred Flame. That's gonna play for a lot of points. Cause not cause Sacred Flame not only does it boost all Firesworn units, but it spawns a Firesworn Zealot, which procs our Fallen Knights. So I think we're gonna look for it with bank, and we do get it, which is pretty nice. Now, now there, there is there there is a consideration to be made here. Actually, we could excommunicate to maybe to maybe get a little bit greedy and look for the flame because this is a crime card and a firesworn card. It's gonna give us a coin, and it's going to trigger these cards. To be honest, I think I'm going to get a little bit greedy here. 
and we're gonna take it. And we're gonna banish one of these. Okay, we don't we don't get it, but we don't get the flame. But we get another fallen knight, which that's not bad to be honest. And I spend with Jacques here because we're gonna profit four with Helvid, so I don't want to over profit. So, I did get a little bit greedy. I, I did not find the Sacred Flame, but we get another Fall Knight, which is not bad. Because we can just spend with Helvede here. Now, although we run out of room... Might as well just spend all our coins here, I think. I think we win this pretty easy. We take the Echo onto Roderick. I think we win this. Now that is a huge point gap. There's no way. Absolutely no way he's catching up. Yeah, no way. Alright, so that was a pretty easy game. Not bad, not bad. Leveled up Journey too. Just want to see what the MMRs are going to. Okay. Yeah, I, I honestly, I feel like I should be a higher MMR with this. I just, I, I've been playing a lot of Nilfgaard recently, so I kind of took a break from Syndicate. Um, But but that's it. It's a pretty fun deck. And like I said, it's it's really good. It's a it's, it's pretty competitive deck. I I love it a lot, to be honest. I, I like it a lot. Now, I, I did get a, gre a bit greedy there, taking the excommunication uh, at the end. But I think we were so far... We were so far ahead of points anyways, I don't think it really... It really mattered all that much in the end. But if it was a tighter game, then... Then maybe I should have just gone for the safe play with the Sacred Flame. But I, th there are situations where maybe you want to take a risk with that. Um, I mean, the excommunication still played for a decent amount of points because, again, it, it's a crime card, so it, it procs the lackeys, it procs the horse son, it procs the the intimidate on Ulrich and fallen knights. So it, it's still it's still good play. Uh, we still won the game by by pretty comfortable amount of points. So that's the deck. Um, let me know what you guys thought about this video. Let me know what kind of video guys you want to see next. Uh, I'm thinking of doing a a Nilfgaard deck guide uh i've been playing a lot of Nilfgaard recently it's it's not as bad as as everyone says it is to be honest Nilfgaard is actually my best faction this season at, at around a 2450 mmr mmr uh but but that's it so let me know what you think in the comments below and i'm always trying to improve i'm always trying to get better um and i'll leave a link to my twitch in the description down below i stream on twitch uh, usually about three to four days a week sometimes more sometimes less uh, but that's about it Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a nice day and see you next time. Bye.